what are the things that we aren't supposed to talk about, right? What it, just in general, what are the things that we're not supposed to talk about? Politics, right? Religion. Yep. Money, probably more anything that, you know, um, comes up in religion or politics that, uh, is, is a, as a topic, right? Uh, which I think is pretty much everything. <laughs> so, so don't talk about anything. Okay. Got it. <laughs> um, that's going to be difficult. Uh, but, but why, right? The things that we're not supposed to talk about, why are we not supposed to talk about them? Cause a disagreement, maybe make people feel uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's, it's, it's not polite. It's just not what's done. Yeah. But what happens when we don't talk about these things, when we, when we actively avoid them, they don't get addressed, right? We, uh, go with the flow. We keep the status quo as is. And what happens when we don't talk about these things? Someone else does, right? Someone else speaks to them. Someone else maybe even decides something about them for you. The Apostle Paul seems to know this, I think. Um, remember, he had preached in and around Galatia. However, as his travels took him elsewhere, um, you know, spreading the gospel to the wider world, others moved in and, and started saying something else, right? Presenting a different message. This letter to the Galatians addresses some really sensitive topics. The role and function of the law and works, the inclusivity of the grace of God, and really specifically the issue of circumcision as voluntary or compulsory or required. Paul speaks to these things. Um, and the thing is, if he doesn't, then the accepted view is going to become one of works and exclusion. And Paul knows this because it's already happening. It's already happening there. And that is not okay. So he's going to talk about it. He's going to write that letter. What are the things we aren't supposed to talk about? What happens when we don't? It can get swept aside. Yeah. Suppressed. Um, how it is is just how it is. We just accept the way things are. And whoever is speaking must be right. Right? Because no one else is speaking, offering a counterpoint. Silence allows that power to grow, right? The powerful can use invisibility, silence to retain and grow that power um, because it's not addressed, right? It's not brought to the center to be examined and questioned the way that um, exceptions are, right? Exceptions are brought into the foreground to be questioned and considered, but we kind of shy away from the, the things that, that are the norm. What are the things we aren't supposed to talk about? Interesting question, isn't it? Another interesting question. What if we did? Now there are good reasons to let someone else speak. Uh, and to listen to what they have to say before speaking ourselves, right? Especially if their lived experience or formal study makes them an expert or authority on a topic, particularly on something that we're not. Um, so, so please, yeah, do note that uh, listening first is important. Amplifying voices is important. But that is something different from remaining silent. In the gospel reading, Jesus sends out the 70 to the places he intends to go. He doesn't send them there to be silent. They are to go and speak, proclaim, share peace, cure the sick, right? 
essentially prepare the way. These are places Jesus himself intends to go. In the letter to the Galatians, the Apostle Paul speaks about his hope and vision for the community of faith as they function and grow within the wider world. Right? They're starting to include more people. And by default, you know, by definition, that is going to mean more differences to figure out, right? By definition, right? That first part of the passage uh, from our Galatians reading for today is so interesting to me. Uh, Bear one another's burdens, right? And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. But then, right after that, all must test their own work, all must carry their own loads, what? <laughs> Statements that really do seem to be at odds with one another, right? Which is it? Bear one another's burdens or carry your own load? Could it be both? Bear one another's burdens and carry your own load, test your own work. Accountable for ourselves and accountable to one another. Autonomy and community. Individual effort, actions and decisions, and support. Person and society. You know, that's kind of like something else I read somewhere. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Those are the two things that are encompassed in that commandment, aren't there? The community, love for the neighbor, and the individual, love for yourself. If we're called to empathize like that, then we're called to understand ourselves as individuals worthy of love. And to understand others as the same. Now, if we stop and imagine that, think about it, what would that look like? Love your neighbor as yourself. There's a consistency to those words, an integrity within them, right? Um, an understanding of our role within the world to care and to listen and support and understand. That's a difficult position to take sometimes, to, to stand up for when it's needed, to say. The 70 still go out. Paul still writes that letter. The conversation continues when we speak and act. When we carry our own loads and bear one another's burdens. When we recognize one another's burdens. When we try to love our neighbor as ourselves. As we go out from here this week, I would encourage us to imagine what that world might look like. Peace, hope, love. May we continue to imagine. May we continue to hope. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, siblings in Christ. Amen.